Hello again. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome Gerd Döring. Gerd is a seasoned network engineer, Unix developer, IPv6 evangelist, and much more from Munich. He will talk about the great power and great responsibilities coming with the use of BGP local pref and the effects it can have on other people's networks. Please make sure to put your questions on the question tab. And Gerd, thanks for joining us, and the stage is yours. Good morning and thanks for the introduction. Let's hope this actually works because I had to change laptops like 30 seconds ago um, because the camera on the Windows laptop that runs the PowerPoint broke. Uh, anyway, as we heard in the introduction yesterday, um, it, <laughs> talks to DNOC are welcome if it's something dear to your heart and local pref is definitely dear to my heart. I tend to rant about that about uh, once a year every time it's uh, biting me again. And so I decided to just put it into slides and share the rant with you. So what is local pref? Um, this is a short, uh, somewhat simplified recap of the BGP best path selection, um, which BGP uses to decide which of two um, path for the same prefix is preferred. And you can see that local pref is right up there at the top. There's weight, but uh, hardly anyone uses that. Um, the most critical ones are local pref, AS path lengths, and then MED, and some more obscure stuff like EBGP before IBGP and lowest IGP metric um, that serve as tiebreakers if the rest is all equal. Local pref by default is 100 for everything, so it normally doesn't play a very um, strong role, but um, as it's up there at the top, it can be used to, to um, very much force what you want. Um, and that's, I think, a common misconception. Um, it's there to force things, but does that, that doesn't mean that it's uh, the best thing to actually achieve results. And I will go into some examples, why not? This is something I have done myself in the past and I have um, been seeing again and again that people classify their uh, external links as um, good, better, much better. And that is sort of transit providers get the default local pref of 100. Everything coming in over a public exchange point gets 200 and private links get 210 and customer links gets 500. I'm fine with the customer links because that really makes sense. You want your customers on your own network and not going over peering. Uh, but I challenge that the first three are actually a good idea. So why? Um, example number one, uh, this is something that uh, we did like 20 years ago. I was young, I had no idea. I thought local pref was a great thing. And of course, um, we had something like 10 megabit to DKIX and only two megabit to our upstream providers. So yet yeah, DKIX is totally superior because it's faster and cheaper and everything. And then came some other AS, let's call it 999, which had a fairly decent connection to um, our upstream. So uh, AS path of length two and a very, very, very poor path coming in over peerings. They had poor connectivity and it was a really long path, like uh, five different ASs all tied together with shoestrings. But uh, as I said, I knew better, I was young, so peering gets local pref 200. And that meant, of course, that my packets did take um, the scenic route, detoured through many different networks and all these links were not good. So my packets were not happy either. I learned from that. So nowadays uh, we really only use local preference on customer connections and on special cases, um, but it keeps coming back and bite me. This is another example um, that has hit me like one to, one, two years ago, um, where uh, we were peering with another AS, we have 5539, let's call the other AS, AS1. 
uh, we saw them over DKIX, so fairly direct connection, short AS path, direct, local pref 200, okay. Um, but they also had a direct peering over private link with one of our upstreams. So they saw our AS with a longer AS path, but over PNI. And since PNI is totally good and peering is not so totally good, they put a local pref of 210 on that, meaning that path won. So the packets coming back to us went over upstream instead of using the direct path over DKIX. Um, that was annoying because, uh, of course, packets coming in over upstream causes some costs, uh, but it also um, had a longer latency and um, more indirect paths are never preferable unless um, the direct path is congested or something. Speaking of direct path being congested or something, brings me to um, my most recent example that was a couple of months ago. And that's the one that actually triggered me into um, giving this talk. Um, DKIX had a weird outage into the fabric, um, which meant we could see the route server, AS5 could see the route server, but packets between our networks got lost. So um, we said, please do not use DKIX anymore. So prepend, prepend, prepend makes this a really, really bad path. Um, we prefer to steer traffic away by making it uh, less attractive than by just shutting down sessions um, because VGP convergence being what it is, um, if you give them a, a poor path and let them find a, a better path, uh, you have no outage in between. If you just shut down your session, you have a few seconds of packet loss, which I try to avoid. Um, AS5 saw us over actually a mutual um, upstream, a thousand, um, short path, thousand, five, five, three, nine, long path, five, five, three, nine, five, five, three, nine, five, five, three, nine, five, five, three, nine, and local pref again, because peering is so cool, you must have local pref on peering. So they kept sending packets over DKIX and uh, DKIX fabric lost them, which was um, unpleasant. In the end, I had to just shut down all the BGP sessions to DKIX, uh, but that was something I wanted to avoid. Um, and uh, it, indeed it caused uh, a customer visible outage, which is something I doubly try to avoid. Which immediately brings me to the last session, somewhat well in time. Local pref is something very strong um, and that definitely has its uses. Um, but if you use it uh, just in a, in a shotgun fashion and put it everywhere, um, this is going to create some suboptimality. Um, it will definitely interfere with the traffic engineering wishes of the AS on the other side. Um, sometimes it creates extra work for you. Sometimes it creates extra work for the network admin on the other side and uh, people do not like extra work. So get scrumpy on that. Um, my recommendation and actually what we use is to uh, leave local pref totally alone on uh, peerings and upstreams and uh, use AS path lengths and MED as tiebreaker. So uh, in most cases, I'm, I'm saying most because of, of course there's always a counter example on the internet, the AS path length is a reasonable indication. If you have AS path of the same length and bump up the MED, um, you can get your traffic steering like if I have two paths of length two over uh, peering and over PNI, and I put the MED on peering a bit higher, um, BGP will prefer the PNI um, for paths of same length. But if I have a path that is shorter on a peering and a longer path on the PNI, the MED will not be evaluated because IS path length wins. And that way you get the direct uh, session without having to do anything. If you use local pref, that's perfectly fine. Consider using it very specifically. Like 
I have all this traffic to DTAC and I really need to make sure DTAC traffic goes here because no, nothing else has uh, sufficient bandwidth. Then of course, local pref is a very reasonable thing to do, but it's selective. It's just these prefixes, these AS path. Um, and if you insist on using local pref everywhere, consider using it only for AS paths of length one. So indirect AS path um, get the benefit of AS path length. And be warned, um, if you do things with local pref, the BGP ghosts will come and haunt you. And that's it. Well in time, I think. Thanks for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Gerd. Um, we do have a question, actually. Uh, why not simply use? I, th I think the question refers to um, to the to the fa uh, DKIX failure scenario that you described. Why not simply use the route server features and have your prefixes no longer announced to AS5 instead of prepending? So why not uh, do not redistribute um, instead of um, prepend, prepend, prepend? Yeah, the thing is that that if you if you use do not redistribute, it's like shutting down the session. Um, AS5 all of a sudden does not see the best path anymore. And that means the BGP implementation on their side has to go path hunting. And for a short moment in time, there's, there's packet loss while the router has no path at all. So if you give him a worse path, um, BGP has the chance to sort of soft reconverge. That, that also ties into the, the grace, graceful shutdown uh, community thing. You tell them there is a path. So if you have no other path, keep using it for a while. But in the meantime, go and find another path because this path is not good. So what I did was actually um, send withdrawals, uh, send do not announce it, their communities uh, fight with the DEX looking glass, which uh, had a cache in and didn't show current data. And uh, in the end, I gave up and just shut down all the sessions, which was more work than, than I would have liked to do on that. Okay, thank you. And another quick question, are more specifics ever justified? More specifics? That's a, that's a different traffic engineering uh, discussion. Um, and I think I could do a, a big rant on that. I would say um, if there, there is scenarios where it's unavoidable, like if you have two big networks peering in 10 different places and you just have a slash, I don't know, 16, and you really need to distribute your traffic. Sending more specifics to that peer is unavoidable because there's just no other way to distribute the incoming traffic. Sending more specifics to the wild internet with the same attributes as the supernet, uh, I think is a, is, a, is a war crime. Okay. So that should um, not, but... or routing vandalism as Jeff Houston <laughs> likes to call it. So more specifics um, as are you unavoidable said, at places, but not uh, generally recommended. But as you said, there's much more in that topic. So maybe we make it uh, make it a talk or a discussion for the next DNOC conference. If, if you want, it I could can be do a rant about that in the next uh, next DNOC, but it's a much bigger topic than just one question. Okay, then um, that's it for now. Thank you very much. And um, everybody else, enjoy the rest of the conference. Indeed, have fun.